morning, everyone. Welcome to the Federated Church. Uh, those of you here today, it's a good crowd. And also those members who are seeking us from the outside world through the internet. So welcome. Um, one thing I, I want to mention about the, that didn't get into the bulletin, the, the men's chorus has a group we come and practice on Thursdays at 5 o'clock. So if, if anybody else wants to join the group, we're going to get together again this Thursday, and we're, we're going to keep on Thursday at 5 o'clock, so we all remember. <laughs> we, we get old and forgetful, I guess. And we, what, day, what day is that, Rick? Thursday at five, 5 o'clock. Okay, and that's the, the just for men only. Is that every Thursday? Yeah, and we'll, we'll need her as a director. So she, she can't make it, but she that's okay. That's all right. But, um, all right, well, sorry. Okay, you can join the women's side. The praise team needs to sing. I pray, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. All right, let's bring our praise team. <laughs> join us, otherwise, you can listen and enjoy it still, right? Everybody ready? To 
are the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. No. Okay. 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip for me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. God, you are my living hope. Amen. It's good to have everybody back singing and Praising God again in the house of the Lord. I'd like to take a, a moment in silent prayer for the Ukrainian country and its people. So just bow your heads and silently pray just for a moment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for watching over them. Um, just a brief note again to reiterate about the information in the bulletin. Please take one home and watch what's coming. And we've got a lot of good things coming up in the fall we can look forward to. So hopefully we can uh, keep those alive and, and, and going forward. So let's uh, get into talking about our, welcome, our call to worship. We gather for worship as children of God. We learn to remember who and whose we are. We gather for worship to re be renewed in our faith. We come with hearts open to receive God's love. We gather for worship to catch a vision of what might be. We come ready to change what is. We gather. We gather for worship and, and gratitude for all we have given. With thanksgiving, we lift our voices in songs of praise. Our morning prayer. Wonderful creator, friend of the earth, you have shown your healing love to the people of every land. You have filled the long centuries with new songs of happiness. By the gift of faith, may the invigorating spirit of the risen Jesus live within us and serve the world through us. Join our songs to all of those who have gone before us and let memories of our joy and love inspire those who come after us. In Christ's name, amen. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Let us embrace God's saving mercy. Join me, won't you, in our unison prayer of confession. Remind us, loving God, that no person is too unimportant to receive your intention and no personal flaw is too large to receive your forgiveness and healing. Remind us that our weaknesses are like hollows where sincere goodness can take root and grow tall. Remind us that our ignorance is a wilderness which under the refreshing wisdom of Christ can blossom like a rose. Remind us that our guilt for both small mistakes and grievous sin can, by God's grace, become the compost for a fruitful season not achieved before. God of abundant grace, deal with us not as we think best, but as you see best. Bring us to genuine repentance and to that yearning which makes those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Through Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Bible assures us here is real love, not our love for God, but God's love for us in the Son, who is the answer for our sins. Through the grace of Christ Jesus, forgiveness and release is ours for the asking. Because we ask and receive this grace, let us be eternally thankful. Glory. 
glory be to the Father and to From the Revelation according to St. John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne, saying, Look! God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the waters of life. When my children were little, we would play a game so often that they would almost groan because it got old quickly. But I uh, tried it on my daughter earlier this week, and oddly enough, it just snapped right back into place. She called and said, they're doing construction work around the campus, and they cut our Internet service. And I said, ooh, that's bad. She said, but we have a hotspot on our our phones. Oh, that's good. So we we liked as little kids, when they were little kids, and I've never grown up, to play that's good and that's bad. Well, Jane... uh, Jane likes sunflowers, in case you didn't know this. I started growing a pot, three pots of sunflowers in my office this spring in hopes of transplanting them into my garden. That's good, right? So that's all I'll say it. That's good. And I transplanted them on Saturday of last week. That's good. Then it got hot. We'll start again. Tell us something good or something bad. We like to pray for one another and lift each other up in our prayers. Uh, 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 Brian is waving his hand well, down here, but Carolyn gets, she, since she I owns the, the microphone, mic, she so. gets to go first. Um, prayers for my family. My mom last Thursday made the decision that she wants to move into an assisted living now. That's good. So things are moving fast. We also had a little health scare for her, but it ended up being... T- just a hernia so we're okay with that but anyway we are visiting health places and we're going to be making decisions so prayers please thank you brian you waved your hand florence want to start something you want to do it? just want to thank thanks for prayers i had uh, uh, surgery and last week and things went well and just praying for clean margins and we'll know in a week or two thank you We've had a crazy couple of weeks at our house, the Miller house. Have you got a minute? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'll, I'll try and... Uh, our, our Camry is no more. <laughs> Going in Ooh. to see uh, Amanda on uh, Roosevelt Road or whatever, somebody pulled out in front of us. Yeah. 
And so uh, we have, we're resigned back to our old junky car. That was Amanda's college car before. It okay. runs, it's getting us there, so. Car, ac no more. car accident, that's bad. Car accident, but the airbags work their magic, and you and wake up in good. a cloud of white. Yep. And, and when you eventually can see where you're at, you're okay. And yep. that's good. That's good. So airbags did their job. Uh, Florence had her second surgery this last Wednesday. My results went well, went smoothly and so on. And we farmers are full speed ahead, right here, right now, <laughs> making up for lost time. And so that's good. We've got good progress, and I'm sure the others do too. Prayers for our safety. We are pushing as hard as we know how to push, right here, right now, because we're a couple of weeks late. Making good progress. Thanks, Lord, for the breaks in the weather. If he wants to give us a rain, who's to argue? But until he does, it is going to be maximum effort for here. So we're glad for the break in the weather. And slow down out on the country roads because there is equipment going up and down the Big roads. Big equipment, as you Big might have noticed equipment. as well. Big right. equipment. Don't, don't try and pass that 16-year-old that planter because it isn't going to work. <laughs> Not well. No, maybe. no. Amanda, update, she graduated last weekend. We were at Wheaton Friday night for some a beautiful concert. Saturday afternoon, meet and greet the professors on the lawn. Sunday morning, baccalaureate, it was a moving experience. You get 1,000, 1,500 people that want to sing, and it, and it gets into your heart somehow differently. Uh, some old faithful hymns that we all know. Uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, Sunday afternoon was commencement. It happened, 500, 600 of them piled up on the stage. She got hers. Yay! And so uh, we're very pleased in celebrating her past. We're looking forward to a Sunday morning when maybe we will host and have a little cookie or something downstairs and she'll be able to greet you folks as well as a postgraduate. She's in class now for three weeks before she goes to, to Scandinavia for three weeks in international travel. So she has that to look forward to. So she's not slowed down just yet. Oh, Steve. April and I would just like to say the church has been a great joy to us for the past 31 years. Some of you know, some of you don't know that we're moving south to be closer to our daughters and grandkids and stuff like that. So that will happen this Friday, but we thank you for the fun, the fellowship, the friendship that we've had here. Uh, you've helped raise our kids and we've helped raise some of your kids. So it's been a great joy. So thank you. And we'll be around at times, uh, yep, the fair open. and all that good stuff. So we're open every we'll Sunday. <laughs> Bruce has some, do you have a microphone on you? No, you don't. I can. Oh, you, you can, okay. Can you turn up Bruce's mic there for him? We're ready here. So I have a couple things to say. Uh, yesterday, Melody went through graduation for uh, Governor State University with her speech pathology degree. Her Excellent. mom was a long time speech pathologist before she passed away, so she didn't start out in that field, but she had an epiphany and switched to that, and she went to Governor's State. So she graduated magna cum laude, so that was really cool. Um, I, I was worried yesterday we were going to miss our dinner, dinner reservations because the speakers took like an hour and a half. I'm like, <laughs> but luckily, luckily not everybody comes to those graduations, I guess. So. Was it a preacher by any chance? Um, he was part of it. He was only like 10 minutes. He, oh, some, okay. preacher <laughs> got a, some preacher got an uh, honorary doctorate degree. So, I don't know. So. But any, um, her, her grandfather, Tom, Charles Ted Glidden, the former retired Presbyterian minister from this area. He uh, lives out in Pittsburgh now, and I think it's a retired minister's home out there. But he had had a bad fall recently, so he, but he was still able to be there. So that was a good blessing. It was actually his birthday yesterday, too, so mm -hmm. cool birthday present. So, um, and Melody uh, joined Concerns. She leaves Tuesday for her trip to Ghana, Africa. So that will be for, so it's like a service trip where they go and they help to upgrade um, uh, water facilities and, and villages and that kind of stuff. So, really proud of her. Just worried a little bit, but it's one of the safer countries to go to, I guess, in Africa. So, not bad. So, thank you. And then Gina, oh, and then you know Gina Scouton. She's my fiance. Uh, she's been working at the Meyer store in Oswego for about four or five years. Went through training, but they never promoted her, and she finally got, you know. Now that they know she's going to be leaving in three months, they decided to promote her to a lead position in St. Charles now. So. Brilliant. But she has, she's going to be a big wig now for at least three or four months. So, <laughs> so she's really happy and excited about that. So. Good deal. So. All right. Thank you. And now Mary? Uh, we've been praying for my friend Nikki. Um, she's actually like a little sister to me. She has her last chemo treatment on Tuesday. And then the end of June, she will be having her surgery. So if we can keep continued prayers, but... 
We're happy that she will be having her last chemo treatment this coming Tuesday. Excellent. I'll talk for her because, you know, I don't want to embarrass Lexi by saying anything about Lexi going to summer camp. But Lexi's going to go to summer camp and we're going to help support her do that. So have a good time. We're sending you with our blessings and we hope you have a good time. Hi, did anybody else go to summer camp when they were kids? I did. I just, that was great. I'm glad you're going. I'd like to be a kid and do it again. Any other joys or concerns? Let us be the people of God in prayer. Loving God, give us light that we may see where human error clouds our vision or where a lack of love and faith withers our hope. Grant us that vision, that light, that we may see more clearly and follow more dearly. We thank you for this Mother Earth on which we live, the friendly soil beneath our feet, the cheerful sun above us by day and the wondrous stars by night for trees that reach up for the light, for plants that flower abundantly for the fruits of the summer and autumn, for creatures that leap and run and swim and fly and dive. We thank you for your creation, for humanity, for with our big possibilities, for the saints and scientists and explorers and prophets and athletes and artists and musicians and poets, for all love that goes that second mile and for those who give their lives for others. We thank you for never leaving us alone, not even when we behave despicably. Always you have been a saving God, but never more than when you came in and through Jesus of Nazareth. His life and death and resurrection fill us with wonder, love, and praise. We bring before you, though, this, those unfortunate folks who are fe featured in the news, the victims of accident or war, disease, for those families in Buffalo where violence and racism have caused such pain and, and death. For greed and natural disasters. Yet we thank you for those fortunate people. We thank you for our farmers who are once again in the fields. We thank you for those whose work promotes them because of their skills and their gifts. We give you thanks for those who have graduated from colleges and universities to move on into the workforce and to share their gifts with others. We bring before you the church where there is persecution, where church leaders confront evil authority, or where simple folk stay faithful through hardship and death. We bring before you our neighbors whose sorrows we don't know about, friends with secret wounds or sorrows, relatives with temptations and anxieties that stay hidden from us. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of good friends. And we send forth as missionaries in your name those who leave our little community and go into the world. And we give our blessings 
upon the Scorps as they reunite together as a family in Indiana. We thank you for their years of service in your name and the continued service that they will offer wherever they, wherever they land. We know that they do so in your name. Hear our prayers, Lord, those that we've shared amongst us for the transition times between independence and assisted living, for the opportunities of going to church camp, for the blessings of chemotherapy and other treatments, for all of those prayers that we share amongst us in support of one another. Hear also those prayers that are known only to you and to us. For it is through Christ, for Christ, and with Christ that our love deepens and spreads and that your love will rule all things just as Jesus taught us to love one another and to pray whenever we gather, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering plates are here and there. Please give to the mission of this church, and then... Before Russ starts the uh, music, I'd like to say I was inspired to do this song based on the way Pastor Randy finishes each of his sermons, and you'll understand that shortly. His name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. I sense an awesome moving of the Holy Spirit. I see His countenance resting on your face. I know that there are angels hovering all around us. For the presence of the Lord is in this place. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. I searched for peace 
among the shadows dark and lonely gave up on finding that strong and lasting love I tasted all the things that sin could think to offer me but today I feast on manna from above He is here Hallelujah He is here Amen He is here Holy, holy I will bless his name again he is here listen closely hear him calling out your name he is here you can touch him you will never be the same he is here you can touch him you will never be the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Our study passage today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Soon, the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what happened. I was in the town of Joppa, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of tame and wild animals, reptiles and birds. And I heard a voice say, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheet and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers here accompanied me, and we soon entered the house, the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as he fell on us at the beginning. <clears throat> then I thought of, of the Lord's words, when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way? When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, we can see that God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving of eternal life.
1932, a man named John developed a better driver for the automobile industry. How many people believe they're good drivers? How many people believe everybody else are bad drivers? Well, anyway, John, he's the man on the uh, left, developed a better driver. In doing so, he received patents for both the driver and the device in which the driver would sit. However, poor John didn't make a dime on his invention. No one would manufacture such items as he had developed. No. Now he was told, good idea, but we don't need it. That was the response he received from the automobile companies. <coughs> John was about ready to just give up when he met a fellow named Harry while having a drink in a bar. Harry liked John's idea and told him, no is just yes to another question. John sold his idea and the patents to Harry, and Harry went about convincing those people who had said no that he wouldn't take no for an answer. Sometimes saying no to certain people is an unwise decision. Maybe you're asked by the pastor or the nominating committee to serve on church council. Are you going to say no? You might try, no thanks, or I'll pass this time, maybe another time, or nah, I'd rather stay in bed and watch Netflix. If that pastor is me, I might let it slide and move on to the next person. But some people won't take no for an answer. People of power and influence, people whose very voice carries the weight of authority imbued with a tone that bespeaks consequences and retribution. People who have the power to bend you with their will. People who are an immutable force of nature. <clears throat> and who can bring you to your knees with just that look, like a mother, reducing you to a whimpering fool. Great leaders usually have people around them who have the courage to tell them no, because the great ones know that to be surrounded by yes men all the time is not a really good idea. Most Fortune 500 companies have people who are willing to be that voice of reason. I'm like you, I need my water too. She's not looking at me right now. But. How about other people of power and influence? Go back a couple of decades when Ted Turner was churning the waters of telecommunications and other forms of media. Turner was frequently a bit controversial. But he was also an entrepreneur, a television producer, a media proprietor, and a philanthropist. He founded, I'll say C and you begin CNN. He donated a $1 billion gift to support the United Nations Hunger Fund. Turner's mantra was lead, follow, or get out of the way. Say what you want, but he was and probably still is a hard person to say no to. If you're of a certain age, you will remember a TV spot in the 1970s <coughs> in which Mother Nature has a taste of what she thinks is fabulous creamy butter. But she is told that it's not butter, but chiffon margarine. Which, by the way, you can't buy anymore, I found out. They don't make it. Well, of course, Mother Nature raises her arms and says with an evil glint in her eyes, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. And then all hell breaks loose with gale force winds blowing 
and trees toppling and houses collapsing into rubble. These examples explain the reason for the Apostle Peter's courage, if you will, to say no. Wait for it. To say no to God. And he did so not once, but three times. God is not a megalomaniac to whom it might be hard to say no, but when Peter said no to God three times, echoing his <coughs> three-time denial of the Lord in the dark hours before the crucifixion, Peter was hindering and attempting to thwart the purposes of Almighty God. Now remember, Almighty God, according to the Nicene Creed, is the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. God was asked by David, where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. According to the scriptures, it is the Trinitarian God before whom Isaiah trembled and said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the, glory, the Lord of hosts. So was Peter crazy to say no to God? And now, let's, let's be fair. Peter didn't resist God in a conscious state. He was in REM sleep. He was probably dreaming, you know. And it was in this dream that he said no to God three times. While in Joppa, Peter was praying and slipped into a trance and saw a vision. A ginormous tablecloth came floating and twirling down from heaven, and before him were some entrees prepared for his consumption. And then he heard a voice, and we have no reason to assume it was not a divine voice. He was told to get up, kill, and eat. Peter offered his first objection, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. This happened three times. This vision must have been a mystery to Peter when he saw and was told to do what to do when, when he was told that what he was, was to do was against his upbringing and his education, against everything that he was as an observant Jew. It is unthinkable that Peter would eat this stuff and defile himself in this way. He was a Jew for goodness sakes. But it wasn't until later when he was in a conscious state that the meaning of this vision came into focus. The process began when three Gentiles invited him to Caesarea. When they arrive, Peter meets his host, a man named Cornelius, and Cornelius explains that an angel told him that Peter would give him a message by which he and his entire household would be saved. This is when Peter got that aha moment. He began to understand that God was doing something new, something different. He understood that old paradigms no longer applied and stale structures no longer serve the purposes of God. So naturally he asked, naturally he said, well, what am I? Who am I to hinder God? Have we ever said no to God? Are we still saying no to God? Don't we say no to God when we are not hospitable and welcoming of strangers among us? Don't we say no to God when we refuse to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? When we hesitate to repay evil with blessings? 
In fact, often our lives are such a flat out no to God that one has to wonder in what ways we're saying yes to God at all. Perhaps we have a problem with saying yes to God because we're used to adding a qualifier. Yes is a simple monosyllabic word, but our complex human nature wants to respond with two words. Yes, but we get cases of yes, but all the time in our normal life. Yes, but just give me a sec. Yes, but so-and-so won't like it. Yes, but we've never done it like this before. Yes, but we're going to need money. Yes, but I'm going to need more time. Yes, but I'm going to need more help. Yes, uh, but I think others have to do their turn first. Yes, but this is not my thing. And yes, but you should really ask someone else. Fortunately, Peter did not come down with a case of yes, but. He understood that it was best not to hinder God. He was sharing the gospel with Cornelius, a Roman soldier, And as events began to unfold, he realized that God was with them. The Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had fallen on the original apostles in that upper room on the day of Pentecost. Peter recalled what Jesus had said to them about this, and then he reasoned that if Cornelius and his entire household received the same gift of the Spirit as the other apostles, had received, well then who am I to hinder what God has planned? Maybe it is our nature to be conservative, to default to the negative when something new or unusual or uncomfortable is happening. We resist change. Peter did, and then he didn't. He said yes to God, not Yes, but. Peter said that it is best not to hinder God. But hinder God at what? About what should we not hinder God? It could be that God wants us to remember that God is a God of new things. What does God want? God wants all people to live and come to repentance. God wants to remember those too often forgotten. God wants us to support those who are oppressed. God wants us to scatter the proud and topple the high-minded. God wants us to lift the lowly and fill the mouths of the hungry. Can we say yes to these ideas? There's a lot of chatter these days about who is clean and who is unclean, about who is right and who is wrong, about right choices and wrong choices. Matter of fact, in Buffalo yesterday, someone thought they had the right to speak for God because he thought God had told him they're unclean. This story about Peter changing his mind can teach us a lot, though, especially that it's okay to change one's mind, opinion, or point of view. Peter finishes explaining to the leaders how and why the good news has been delivered to the Gentiles, and immediately after he utters these words, who was I to think that I could hinder God? The text goes on to say that when they heard these things, they fell silent. This is precisely opposite of what's going on today. We're many things, but one of them is we're not silent. We're too busy shouting or condemning or being unloving or unkind 
that thoughtfully wondering what might be more that's going on uh, here is something we don't take much time to realize. We generalize, scrutinize, jeopardize, antagonize, stigmatize, demoralize, victimize, brutalize, ostracize, and marginalize, but under no circumstances will we apologize or harmonize or even socialize with those who may be leading us into a different direction. These old saints were silent. Imagine that. Some translations say they stopped arguing and they began to clap. They broke into applause and said, okay then, if God is giving us good news, it must be to the Gentiles as well. Sadly, the church too often has been on the wrong side of justice and fairness and numerous other social issues. The church has listened to scores of prophetic Peters urging Christians to support various causes such as a woman's right to vote or encouraging Christians to join the abolitionist movement or pleading with Christians to advocate for civil rights. Eventually the church praised God and helped change the lives of countless people. You remember Henry and John, or Harry and John, excuse me, Harry knew that no was just yes to another question. He knew better than to take no for an answer. He took what John had made and ignored the multiple no responses John had received. And then he chose to go with the Apostle Peter's understanding. To know that no is not the final answer, but the answer to another question. So Harry took this invention, and while the automotive industry wasn't interested in better drivers, he convinced that Ford, he convinced Ford that General Motors was interested and that they should be as well. And then he told Chrysler that General Motors was interested and they should be as well. And then he told the Army, the Navy, and the federal government that they should be interested because these other places want the idea before, but I'll give you a better price for it. Before he knew it, Harry was getting yes. Henry. What do I keep saying Harry? It's Henry. Yeah, it's Henry. Before he knew it, Henry was getting yes for an answer when all the poor, all the poor John got was no. Henry Fonda? Oh, back one. I went too many, too quickly. Was it Henry Fonda? Dale is going back one slide to Henry Fonda? No. It was Henry Phillips, no relation to Mary Ann. Now you can go to the other one. The better driver, conceived by John Thompson, was sold to Henry Phillips, and the receptacle was the thing on the right. A better driver. Friends, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is for us all. The church continues to struggle with how to engage with the issues of our times. Let us take time to listen to the prophets, as did our ancient forebearers did to listen to the apostle Peter. Then let us be silent and engage in prayerful reflection And then let the church erupt into praise and thanksgiving by saying, who are we that we could hinder God? Because no is just yes to another question. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Precious Lord, hear our weak cries and lead us in your ways. 
Strengthen our hearts as we feed upon the word that comes from the Good Shepherd. Train our ears to distinguish your voice, concise and clear, amid the din of conflicting desires and mounting urges that compete for our attention. In a culture which enshrines self as the one and only leader, let us submit ourselves to your shepherding love and mercy. Amen. Since I get to pick the last hymn, I get to pick my favorites. Number 92 in your hymn book or follow on the screen. Let's stand and sing. Come on. I had to check the hymnal there to make sure it was correct, which of course it isn't. <clears throat> it's a traditional American melody. No, it's not. It's a Negro spiritual. Don't be afraid to say it what it is. It was written by folks that aren't like you and me. That's okay. It's a great hymn, isn't it? I love the song. Why do we, we have to sanitize it? Come up here. I need you. Because yours, you are much, much better at it. Stand up here on this one up here. How many people like to go out for dinner today? How many people are going out for dinner today? Right now. How many people are making plans to go out to dinner? And where are you going? Breakfast? Breakfast, Breakfast of course. How many people want to go out for a good steak? Yeah. How many meat eaters do we have here? Yeah. My favorite place to eat when I go out with, go to see my dad, and I'm going to do that in a couple weeks, we're going to go to a steakhouse. It's his favorite steakhouse. It's called Nino's Steakhouse. Okay? And I learned when I was your age that to, to go, to, if you want to tell, you want to convince, now see, I don't know, how, does it take a lot to convince grandma to do something you want to do? Or how, what do you have to do to convince her that you want to do that? 
You just ask? Do you just ask? Or, no, I like to just play on my playroom like you asked me to. Okay, all right, all right. Does she, can she twist your arm? That's good, that's good. I can twist my grandpa, I can quit, twist my dad's arm to go out to Nino's by doing one thing. Let's do this with me, okay? Reach, reach with your hand, touch your knee, touch your knee. Knee, knee. Go. Got it? And it never fails. Dad says, let's go out for steak. <clears throat> I had to come up with something with the word no. But if we're going to do this, I want it to be yes. Right? So yes, let's do some things maybe that God is asking us to do and stop saying no. But we can say Nino's. No, let's say yes. Let us go out this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, giving thanks and praise always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your knees and your nose. <laughs>